Are you one of those nurses or nursing students that gets excited about the gross stuff? If so, excellent. Keep watching. But if not, just know that you have been warned. I'm about to share with you some graphic images of infection and teach you about the signs and symptoms to watch out for with your patients. We will use these images to talk about assessments you will commonly perform when your patient has the hallmark sign of infection, an elevated white blood cell count on the CBC or the complete blood count. The normal range for white blood cells is between 4,500 and 10,000 per microliter. If there's an elevated white blood cell count on the CBC, that means that there's an infection or inflammation somewhere in the body. This is because the immune system is producing more white blood cells to mount an attack on whatever is invading and causing the disruption. These images will help me show you four common locations and the signs and symptoms of infection that you need to watch out for with your patients. One, surgical site infection. Two, sepsis. Three, pneumonia. And four, urinary tract infection. So without further ado, let's start assessing some gross pictures of infection that led to an elevated white blood cell lab value. This first image is of a surgical site infection. This is an image of a patient post thyroglossal cyst removal. There are four key characteristics that point to elevated white blood cells in this particular image. Let's go over them together. So first, you can see the redness. Can you see all this redness here? And the rest of the skin isn't that color. It all looks pretty good. So we know that there's more blood flow to this area. It's also, look at all this swelling. See how it's fighting against the sutures right here? Swelling indicates that there's also inflammation. Then look at this drainage. This is probably the grossest and coolest part. The drainage from the surgical site itself, as well as here on the dressing. And while I haven't palpated this patient's surgical site or around it myself, it would likely be tender and definitely the skin would be warm. So those are the four main identifiers of an infection that we can see from this patient example. Remember that we were initially concerned because the white blood cell count was elevated. Our lab results showed us that there was a problem and we had to figure out where that problem was originating. I keep talking about elevated WBCs and you may not be familiar yet. So I want to give you a free study pack to help out with identifying lab values. I use the cheat sheets in this study pack in nursing school to learn and understand lab values and they were so helpful. So helpful, in fact, that we compiled them into an entire study pack just for you. Now, what helped me pass my classes and the NCLEX is all in one study pack. You can find it at nursing.com slash lab values, and I've included a link in the description below. This next image is of a patient that has sepsis or septicemia, which is a bloodstream infection. So this means that the bacteria is traveling all through the bloodstream. So it's being distributed everywhere. This is a patient that you may know as septic from their vital signs and their physical assessment. And that would be before you even get that white blood cell lab back. With a bloodstream infection this advanced, this patient likely came to the hospital because they were having trouble with multiple body systems. And we can definitely identify or expect that their white blood cell count will be well above that top threshold of 10,000 per microliter. So let's go through the signs and symptoms from this image. This patient would most likely be in severe septic shock, and they're even appearing with some ischemic zones on the skin. That's evident because of this splotchy kind of mottled appearance. What's happening is that there are microthrombi that have formed because in an infection this advanced, there are going to be some coagulopathies. You can also see the major swelling in this patient's extremities, here in the feet, in the legs in general. With a bloodstream infection, the pathogens are cycling through the entire circulatory system and histamine gets released. This causes widespread spread dilation of the blood vessels and results in this peripheral edema. 
Now, bonus one here. Did you happen to notice the IO or the interosseous infusion happening? I would bet that this patient's venous access was so tricky to find due to the advancement of the infection that the IO actually had to be used in order to infuse anything for this patient. Here's an x-ray of a patient's lungs. Now, this infection can be a little bit more difficult to identify since it's not readily available or visible on the outside. But with pneumonia, we can definitely see through imaging when they have an active infection. We may also be able to know that they have pneumonia through other signs and symptoms, as well as their vital signs. And that's all in addition to the lab values and the imaging. So the image here on the left, image A, this is actually a healthy patient's lungs. See all this blacked out area? This is air. That's what air looks like when it's moving. So it's blacked out. This patient's lungs are nice and clear. However, in image B here, you can see these little red arrows. They are pointing to what are called infiltrates. Infiltrates are actually the hazy white spots on x-ray and they are the infectious particles that the white blood cells are actually attacking. And as you learned in anatomy and physiology, the body will produce additional white blood cells when there's an infection so that it can help to control everything. And that's why the lab will be above that top threshold of 10,000 cells per microliter. Common causes of pneumonia in the hospital are from aspiration and from artificial ventilation. Here it is, folks, the last and final nasty image. And no, that is not lemonade, that is not custard, it is actually a patient's Foley bag who had a suspected urinary tract infection due to urinary retention. When the patient was catheterized, the suspicion of the UTI was confirmed with the release of this highly infectious urine. Why is it so cloudy? Well, it's full of pus and white blood cells, bacteria, and that's really what pus is, and that's what gives it its thick, cloudy appearance. After a UA and a reflex to culture, the appropriate intravenous antibiotics would be given to clear up this type of infection. And there's really not much more to say about it other than if your patient's urine looks like this, there is definitely a problem. So let this image remind you of the importance of proper Foley care and the interventions necessary for early removal of an indwelling urinary catheter whenever possible. Performing thorough assessments of all lines, dressings, wounds, etc. can prevent complications and an elevation of white blood cells on the CBC. But that's not just assessments regarding appearance of the surrounding tissue or placement, but also assessing the date that the lines, the dressings, and catheter were placed. It's well within the scope of the nurse to determine if something needs to be replaced and to make recommendations for discontinuation. Sometimes, though, the initial identification of a problem will be found by an elevated white blood cell count in the lab values. To help you identify problems early, there is a link in the description below to get a lab value study pack, including 63 must-know lab values, so you can learn the normal values and what each one looks like when it's outside of normal range. I hope it helps for you to have all the cheat sheets that help me pass my classes and the NCLEX all in one study pack. You can download it for free at nursing.com slash lab values. After that, who's thirsty for some lemonade? Now go out, be your best self today, and as always, happy nursing.